Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Oaxaca, the Crafts of a Culture, which is a new dice rolling engine building game that's on Kickstarter right now, and I'm be doing a two-player run through today so you can see what it's all about. Although before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And also, I have to very strongly point out, this is a prototype that I will be showing you today. Uh, I think a lot of this gives you an idea of what the final art looks like, but I know there's one significant change coming. In this run through, I'll just be running, playing with some standard, you know, D6 dice with the regular pips you're used to. But the real game is going to come with custom dice that instead of having pips, they're going to have icons representing all the different crafts goods. Um, uh, what, you know, lumber and textiles and tin and jewelry and stone that you can work with. So the game will be a little bit more strongly thematic when you're rolling with cool custom dice instead of these ones. But you can see more about that if you want to hit the eye in the top right corner of the screen to go to the Kickstarter page. But this will do to give you an idea of what the gameplay is like. So. What is the theme? What is the gameplay? Well, we are Oaxacan craftspeople, artisans, who are making goods to sell to tourists. And we're going to be doing this over three rounds. So as part of setup, i got to take the tourist deck, shuffle it up, so every game you're going to get a different combination of six tourist cards. So let's see what i got. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So, as you imagine, uh, it's going to be a very different game than if I'd picked some other ones. But anyway, these are the tourists who will be visiting us that we will be trying to sell our beautiful items to. We are starting out here in the first round. The game takes place over three rounds. This round, then this round, then this round. And the way it works, well, actually, everybody's little player mat is also a very nice turn summary. And the first thing we do at the beginning of every round, here we are in the first round where this tourist and this tourist are available to us, is we roll all our dice and we get to do one re-roll if we're not 100% happy with what we got. So let's see what I got. Alrighty, a 1, a 1, a 2, a 4, and a 5. Now, I could just live with that, or I could re-roll 1, 2, or all of these if I wanted. Now, right now, oh, I, let's see. I'll go on ahead and take the 1s, and I think I'll take this 4, because interestingly, right now, I have access to a 4 tourist. So this and this will work well together, and now I've got this 2 and this 5. So basically, like I said, remember, in the real game, they're not going to be numbers. They are going to be symbols that represent the different craft goods we can build. So, um, you know, four is textiles, uh, you know, building carpets and whatnot, or crafting them. Two is pottery, the famous black pottery that this region is known for, because they have this special black clay that is famous worldwide. So I could do some pottery as well. Uh, five is wood carvings. Um, and Oaxaca is incredibly well known for their wonderful little wood carving icons. In fact, it's interesting. If you go to the Kickstarter page, right now I'm playing with just a couple of meeples, but I believe there is a deluxe version of this game on the Kickstarter that replaces these meeples with real, authentic Oaxacan um, wood animal carvings that are gorgeous. Oh my god, they look so nice. But again, meeples will work for me today. All right, so I can keep these or I could re-roll them. And right now, I'd like to roll some more fours if I could. So I'm going to go on ahead and re-roll. And, oh, I got another one, which and ones are wild cards, and I'm still with a two. All right, so now, while I was doing that, Jen was doing hers. Everybody does this simultaneously. See, Jen's got a couple of sixes. She'll live with those. A couple of threes. And with that, let's go on ahead and reroll this to either get a, a three or a six, hopefully, or a four, which could dovetail with that. Okay, so we're done rolling. Now we are ready to start playing. These dice represent the different good or the, the different craft goods we can work in. And here's how it works. On your turn, and I am the first player, on your turn, move one of your dice from your sunrise to your sunset. And based on what that die is, either gather that particular type of good or craft with that particular type of good. Um, or uh, material, I guess. You know, whether it is tin or wood or textiles or jewelry or clay. All right. So, I'm the first player. I can activate any of these dice. Oh, also, I should say, in addition to activating one die to either gather or craft, at any point during your turn, you can also activate up to two cards in your market stall 
Um, and you can also use a tourist card. And you can also scrap a project, although you pretty much never want to do that because you're throwing points away. So I didn't mention, at the beginning of the game, here is my workshop where I can have up to three projects on the go. Three things that I am crafting to sell to tourists. Down here is my market stall where I actually put my wares on display. At the beginning of the game, everybody has this. This is a wild card. This is as if, whenever I use this, I tap it to use it, it's as if I have an additional one because on my turn, I'm going to use one of these dice. In addition to the one that I'm going to use, I can have a second dice. So I could do two dice action this turn. One from my main dice and one from this. So let's go on ahead and do that. I'm going to actually use one of my ones. So it comes over here. Now, um, when you use a die, you, like I said, you gather, which means you draw cards from the uh, matching you know, uh, material deck or you craft stuff that's in your workshop of the same material. Now the interesting thing is one, which in the real game is just gonna look like a star to represent a wild card, a one can stand in for anything. So this means I could grab, um, you, know, uh, you know, from the, I see, I probably, since I've got this four, and there's this four over here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this as if it was a four. It's a wild card, so it's gonna stand in as a four for me. And that means I get to either work on a uh, textile project or I can start one. I can get some materials. I'm going to go ahead and start because I don't have anything. I'm going to start one. I draw a card and I am working on this lovely rug. All right. So first of all, the number three there means I'm going to have to work on this three times to complete it. Once I've worked on it three times, it'll move down here to my market stall and give me access to this power. This, this special power of this rug is, it anytime I want will give me a two, a three, a five, or a six. That's very powerful. That basically means I have an extra die of, with a lot of flexibility in my turn, but I have to spend time working on it. So um, that is what I use this die for. And now, <clears throat> before my turn is over, uh, remember, I can activate up to two cards in my market stall. I'm going to go ahead and activate this. And it's as if I have another one. So it's like a one just came out of nowhere and I'm using it. And remember, ones are wild cards. So ones mean I could grab another project from any um, pile or I could start working on an existing project. I'm going to start working on this. So I'm getting close to finishing that. That's it. That's my, oh, there's one more thing I can do. I've got my meeple. Anytime I want during this round, I could deploy my meeple to either this tourist or this tourist and use that ability. This one is flip one of my dice. So I could turn this four into a three, or I could turn this two into a five, or I could turn this one into a six. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use him right now. And I'm gonna go to another four. And so, uh, remember, this was a textile, it's a number four. So I am going to work on this some more. I only have to work on this one more time and I've completed it. So I'll have it on display very soon. That was the end of my turn. It was a very busy turn. I used one die, I used one of my market stalls, and I used my meeple. Now I'm not going to have him for the rest of the round. After everybody has used all their dice, we, re we go on to the next round. These will be the tourists available and we get our meeples back. So anyway, that was my turn. Now there's one thing I didn't mention amongst all that. Using a one as a wild card is cool because it gives you access to any type of good, but it gives you weak access. Instead of having used this one, if I had used this four, what would have happened is instead of, remember I used the one as a wild card for four. That meant I just drew the top card and I took whatever I want. If I'd used this, instead of just drawing and taking the uh, top card, I could draw two and pick one. So I have more flexibility about what projects I start working on. Now I didn't use that, I used the one. And remember, one as a wild card is a weak version of doing the, 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 the actions you can normally do. So anyway, so I did that and it was a busy turn. I did pretty much everything I could do. I used my die, I used one of my things, my marker salt, and I used my meeple. Jen's turn, what is she gonna do? Let's see here. Now, she has her meeple. She could deploy to either of these guys. She's got her wild card and she's got all these dice. I think she'll go on ahead before she uses her die, she'll use this as a wild card and she'll take something from the, um, Oh, hold on a second. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of like that. So, um, although, could you use this for that? Hmm. What I'm thinking, I, I see, this is the first time I, there's a lot of really interesting combo stuff you can do in this game. Let's see, where is my list of tourist cards? That is, this is the first time I've seen this flip to the opposite die. 
Must be used on your unused dice, not an opponent. Right. Ah, uh, okay, shoot. What I was thinking is, Jen could use this one, so it's like she had a one, but then she could deploy her meeple over here to turn this one into a six, so it effectively gives her another six. That would be a really cool combo, but I just double-checked, and this tourist says, it has to be on one of your unused dice. It can't be on these kind of virtual dice you get from your goods. So, Jen was thinking that'd be awesome to get another six, but she can't do that. So anyway, she'll use this just as, as a wild card. She'll use it as a six, which means she's going to draw a project. And since she's not using a full, if she used a full six, she'd draw two and pick one. The other one would either go back to the top or the bottom of the deck. But instead, she's going to use this one as a wild to get this. And it is, um, all right, uh, this is a, a special power. Once she builds this, and it's going to take her four goes at it. It's worth four points once built. She's going to have to spend a while building it. And this, when it's um, in her market, she can tap this to use any tourist ability whenever she wants, even if it's not that round. So that was pretty cool. So, but she hasn't actually done her core thing. Remember, her core thing is to play a die. So I believe she will go on ahead and play this six, but, so, remember how I use this one to start working on my thing? She's gonna play the six, not to um, start working on this, but to get another 10, uh, you know, because the six is the 10, to get another 10, a uh, bu bunch of 10 that she'll be able to work. But now, since she's using a full die, she will draw two and pick one. All right, so, here's another one, use the tourist ability, or this one, re-roll one of your unused dice. So, um, this is cooler because it's worth four points instead of three, but it takes longer to build. But the, uh, you're re-rolling a, a die that could be cool, but you never really know if you're going to get what you want. Whereas this is very powerful. So I think Jen would rather have this than this. So she's going to take this. It also needs four steps to build. And she could put this on the top or the bottom. This one isn't so great. She'll put it back at the top knowing full well. Well, no, no, no. She'll put it at the bottom. She'll put it at the bottom. All right. There we go. So, um, she doesn't know what's at the top, but she knows it could be better than what that thing she just drew. Alright. By the way, I should say, going to these different um, stacks, when you're starting to get your projects, they have thematic reasons. This is tin, this is wood, this is uh, you know clay, etc., etc. But each type of good, the deck has a particular theme. Sixes tend to focus on dice manipulation. Although, interestingly, uh, this is the only... Uh, one of the only cards that doesn't do dice manipulation, it's use uh, tourist ability. The fours, where I'm going for, tend to focus on giving general purpose bonuses. Threes give you extra points, extra scoring opportunities. Twos give you ways you can work more efficiently in your workshop, etc., etc. So, when you're picking what deck to go for, well, in part, you're driven by what dice you have, but you're also driven by what type of powers you want to get. All right. So, anyway, that was Jen's turn. She used a six to draw two and pick one, and then she also also use this to get another one. So I'm only working on one project. Jen's got two projects on the go here. All right. So we'll see how well that works out for her. So that was her first turn. And she has not deployed her meeple yet. She could have deployed it to flip a die or get a four, but she'll wait on that for a little bit. Okay. Back to me. Back to my turn. Now for my second action, I um, I can't use this anymore. I don't have my meeple. Now I'm just down to using my dice. I'm going to go on ahead and use this other wild card to finish this. So, I have finished. This now moves over here, and it's available for tapping right now. Because remember, I can tap up to two objects. This one's already used, but I could tap this to use this. This was my core die, but I can get another die. A two, a three, a five, or a six. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to tap this, and I'm going to say, hey, you know what, folks? I just got myself a two. Am I? Yeah, I just got myself a two. So it's as if a two die came out of nowhere, and I'm going to use that two to come over here and draw two and pick one. Because remember, if you use a one, uh, the wild, you know, the, the, weak, uh, the, the weak die, you just take whatever you get. But if you use a, a proper number, you can draw two and pick one. So this one, it's going to take a while to build, and it gives me, it gives me in another space, so I can be working on four projects at once. And oh my gosh, the other one is the same. You know what? I shuffled these decks up. I really, really did, folks, but I say let's just mix it up a little bit because I don't want to show you a lot of the same card. There are duplicate cards in here. So, okay, here's some different ones. Plus one, so I have more space in my shop. I can be working on four projects at once, or this one, which is easier to build, and is, again, gives me access to more dice, like the one I already did. Which one do I want? I'll go for the quicker one. All right, and so this I can put at the top or the bottom. I'll go ahead and put it at the bottom. 
So that was a bonus action I got because I used this rug that I had just made. So my turn is over. I've still got three more dice for this round. I'm working on more stuff. It is Jen's turn now. So Jen, this is interesting, 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 interesting. Right. Jen is going to use this six and she's going to draw from the six deck again. She's going to draw two more and pick one. All right. Oh my gosh, it's the tourist ability. I, I swear, folks, there are a lot of cards in here. I don't know how I ended up with the exact same three. I, maybe I didn't shuffle these. I thought I shuffled them. But anyway, so it's another one of these same things or one of the ones that I've been getting, these things that um, you know give me access to more dice. Does Jen want to have three access to tourist abilities? I mean, because there are tourist abilities that give you dice as well. Yeah, what the heck? Jen will do it. She'll take that. She'll put this at the bottom. Crazy. What are the chances of that? Okay. So that was um, Jen's turn. And this also. So she's got three big projects on the go. Three of the exact same one, coincidentally. And she hasn't started working on any of these yet. But she's still got more dice. So she'll worry about that next round. She still hasn't used her meeple as well. Okay, back to me, back to my turn. I've got three dice. I want to start working on this thing, so I'm going to go and take this two, and, oh, oops, I'm sorry, I should have, when, I, when you take these, you always put your cubes on them, so I need to do three things on this. So, I'm going to take this two and start working on it. Okay, and yay, I need to do two more actions. That was my turn, very simple, because I don't have my meeple, I've used up all my special stuff. Jen, she's going to go again now, and here's the deal. She cannot put anything more in her workshop. You can only have three things in your workshop. Jen wants to start working on all these right now. Here's the problem. She doesn't have any more sixes. There is a six for the terse, but that won't be available till the second round. So what is Jen going to do? Well, um, here's where things get a little funky. Whenever you want, well, on your turn, you have to use one of your dice. But if you want, you can combine that die with another die. Either one of these virtual dice from your things or from over here. So you can combine dice and turn dice into any value you want. So Jen's going to go on ahead and use this three, but she doesn't want a three. She does not want a, a jewelry project. She doesn't have room for it. And this three won't let her work on her tin um, stuff. So Jen is going to send her guy over here. So she's got a four. Now she's not using this as a four die. She's combining her virtual die with this to basically say, you know what? This is a six. Although you're not actually supposed to flip like that. So Jen's using a six. So she is now going to work on sixes. And here's the deal. This is a, a big part of the efficiency. You've been seeing me for the most part. I've been working on one thing at a time, but if you've got multiples in your workshop of the same value, you can work on all of them at the same time with the correct value die. So Jen just turned this three into a six. So that means she gets to work on all of them. Boop, boop, boop. So Jen has now finished 25% of all three of her projects. So me, I'm just building fast. I'm, I'm not being very efficient. I'm just focusing on one thing. Jen set herself up to have a whole bunch of stuff and she's gonna work on them with peak efficiency by, even though she didn't get the dice she wanted, she can convert dice into the dice she wanted by mixing and matching. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. My turn. And, all right, so I wanna keep working on this thing. Well, here, oh, sorry, okay, I've got two more dice. I could say, hey, I'll, I'll hmm. So I could use this one as a while to do some more work on this, but then I'm left over with this four and I won't have any virtual dice to combine this four with to finish it. So I think I'm gonna go on ahead and use this four and start a second project. Um, it's gonna come from the textile deck. I'm using a four, so I'm, you, I draw two and pick one. Oh my gosh. All right, I clearly did not shuffle these decks. Uh, at all because all of these cards just keep coming up the exact same things and that is impossible after Jen and I played the game the last time we uh, kind of went through and looked at what all the powers were and obviously we did not reshuffle at all ah embarrassing all right so I'm gonna draw two and hey look it's not the exact same card okay so I'm gonna pick one of these these are both uh, textile projects. This one is worth four. They're both worth four points, so they're both going to take a while. This one gives me a special power of 
untapping one of my cards in the market so I can use it a second time. This one is like my starter. It just gives me another wild card. I've already got a wild card, so I think I want this. This just lets me untap. It gives me more flexibility. So I take that. I'll put this. I can put it, I'll put it back at the top so I know what's there. So that was my core action. I used a four. Now I am working on pottery and I'm working on textiles, which means, um, oh, and I needed to put four on here, which means I can't be efficient. I can't work on both of them at the same time. If I use a four, I could activate this. If I use a two, I could activate this. Whereas Jen, when she uses a six, she can activate all of her sixes. So anyway, so I did that. Jen's turn. So. Um, this three and this four don't do her any good, but she's going to go on ahead and use this three. And the same way last time, she combined this three with this virtual four. Now she's going to combine this three with this real four to make another six. And that means she's going to work on all three of these projects all at once. And just like that, boom, she's halfway done on all of them. Once they're all done, that's going to be 12 points she scored and three cool special powers. Um, although it's kind of a bummer because you can only use these cards once per round. And so the, this round is going to end without Jen having finished anything. Me, uh, my things I built, I've actually used them in the round I got them because I, I worked really hard and fast, whereas Jen is working slow and efficient. So that was Jen's turn. And uh, hey, because she doubled up on her dice, I've got one more go. I'm going to use this. And since it's a wild card, I can um, work on this or this. I'll just try and get this finished a little bit quicker. All right. So that was the end of the first round, folks. Now we move on to the second round. We get our meeples back. Um, and we re-roll our dice. And remember, we get one re- we, we, get our, we roll our dice and we get one re-roll. And then we'll start the second round and we'll see, oh, and we also untap our market goods so we have access to these powers again. And let's uh, see, Jen is like, where are my sixes? Wow, four fours, not a single six. Now, one thing is, Jen knows she's got this six right here, plus she can keep reusing these sixes once she unlocks these abilities. She needs sixes, though, to work on this. She didn't like anything she rolled. Let's re-roll everything and hope to find some sixes. Wow, oh, that was a bad roll for Jen. Only one six. But you know what? This one six will almost finish these, and then she'll use her meeple for the other six. All three of these will be done, and then they'll all be cleared out. And then she could use these threes and these twos and these fives and this five to start building other stuff. So she can uh, completely shift gears. Me, let's see, I want fours and twos. I didn't roll a single four or two. What the heck? I, nor did I roll any ones for wild cards, so I can't work on either of those without having to double up. So I'm going to re-roll everything as well. Show me some fours and twos. All right. Wow. Three fives, a six, and a two. That's what I've got, and we are ready to start the second round. But you know what, folks? If you want to see that second round, you can hit that I to go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go to final thoughts. Um, and here with Jen, I thought of the game. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.